a little background on our company, Solver. It's headquartered out of Los Angeles, and we're a fast-growing company. We have partnered with many great companies like Interdime BMI to grow our customer base. We have over 1,400 customers in over 40 countries. We have offices all over, over the world in U.S., Canada, Europe, and um, Asia, India. Our company product, CI360, is a business intelligence solution tool that has won many awards over the years. We have been included in the prestigious partner group, Magic Quadrant, for corporate performance management for the past couple of years. We are honored to be a part of it again this year. Why does BIG60 win all these awards? Customers choose our product time and time again because it is extremely easy to use. It's a complete self-service business intelligence suite, and we have many um, we have deep integrations built across many ERP platforms. So this is a diagram of all the modules available in our BI360 solution. Reporting, planning, dashboards, and data warehouse. Security sits on top of all of these modules where you can create a security profile off of a user's Windows credentials. The security profile will apply for each of these modules. The reporting module offers the ability to build reports directly off of the dynamic ERP database or the data warehouse. When connected to the live ERP database, you can report at the financial level or the subledger level. We translated all of the SQL table names to plain English to make the report writing process easier. Instead of the scary SQL table names that's typically associated with field names, Customer fields will be labeled as customer. Department fields will be labeled as department. This way, customers can easily identify which fields they want to bring over when designing reports. The reporting module is an Excel add-in tool. It utilizes drag-and-drop functionality to easily design and customize reports. You can control your rows and columns easily with this drag-and-drop functionality. Reports can be executed via Excel, the web, or on mobile apps. They can be scheduled for automatic distribution as well. The focus of today's webinar will be on the planning module. The planning module is very much married to the reporting module in the sense that all of the budget templates are created using the Excel report writer. Users can input budget amounts via Excel or the web and have it automatically save budget data back to the data warehouse with the push of a button. Because these input templates are designed using an Excel-based report writer, there is a lot of flexibility with creating the input templates. With planning, we have workflow capabilities that track where users are in the budget process. Now, dashboards are available with the web portal. Dashboards also utilize the drag-and-drop feature in Report Designer that make it extremely easy to build and customize dashboards. Dashboards can also be built directly off of the ERP database or the data warehouse. Last but not least, the Data Warehouse Manager is a tool that holds multiple data sources and for reporting and budgeting. It has a friendly interface built for business users. The Data Warehouse already comes pre-configured, so it can be set up in days and not months. It migrates data from your ERP or other data sources via SSIS integration, various connectors, or even through an Excel file import. With the data warehouse, you can do consolidations, currency translation, set up trees, custom modules, and many more. This is a simplified architecture diagram. Um, that it gives you an overview of how all the BIG60 modules fit together. Starting from the reporting and dashboard module, you can build reports 
and dashboard directly from your ERP data source. However, if you plan on bringing in multiple data sources, whether it's CRM, payroll, or any other data source, you can consolidate all of your data sources into the data warehouse so that users can access all their data from a single location and get one version of the truth. Once that information gets pushed into the data warehouse, you have the ability to run reports, dashboards, and do budget write-backs against the data warehouse. The dotted line from the planning module to the data warehouse show that you can push budget data directly into the data warehouse automatically via the budget template. Now that we've discussed at a high level the components that make up the BI360 solution, I am going to do a live demonstration of our BI360 product. I will start by demonstrating the web portal, which will be the end user's experience of dashboards, reports, and budget templates. I will go through the various budget templates and examples that are available on our corporate demo model. Then I will move into the Excel portion where I demonstrate how the budgeting template gets built. I'll conclude with a summary and then open up the floor for questions at the end of the presentation. All right. So I'm going to first show you the web portal. I have Internet Explorer open and I am going to type in the link of our web portal. Now this is where a user will log in with his or her Windows authentication credentials. And this is where security will apply. So you can create set security profiles based off of any dimensions, and you can even do a combination of dimensions. So a user security access can be limited to specific departments, companies, you can even limit the user security by modules, whether the user is going to have access to the payroll module, whether there may be some sensitive information. You can even set security around particular accounts. So again, if you want to um, prevent certain users from seeing payroll related accounts, you can get very granular with how you set up a user security. So once a user logs into the web portal, this is the main library page. And again, the web portal contains dashboards, reports, and budget templates. So as you can see, there are various ways you can view all of your dashboards, reports, and budget templates, depending on your preference. Over here to the left, you'll see folders. And these folders are great because you can use folders to categorize all your reports um, into folders. So you might have a folder for your financial report, a folder for your sub-ledger report, a folder for your budget report. And the great thing about these folders is that you can set security around the folders as well to limit access um, to specific users. You'll also have the ability to favorite your most commonly used dashboards, reports, and budget templates. The nice thing about um, favoriting a report is that you can easily toggle through your other favorited reports easily down below here so that you don't have to go into the main page and sort through all of the reports and dashboards that are available. All right, um, so this is an example of a dashboard. Dashboards are created in the web portal. Um, all dashboards are driven by these parameters that you see here. So a user can go in and select you know, which fiscal year they want to run this dashboard for and what type of budget transactions they want to see, whether it's actual data or uh, particular budget data or forecast data. Now, one thing to note about these parameters is that they're customizable. So if you want to create a dashboard where an end user will go in and um, select 
run the dashboard for a particular department, then you can just easily create that department parameter and bring it into this dashboard. All right, so once a user selects his or her criteria for the parameters, they just simply hit the refresh button and it will refresh to give you the latest data related to the parameter selection. All right, and this is a revenue dashboard and this particular dashboard has revenue information for all the different companies. And all dashboards have the ability to drill down with the click of a button. So if I click into this corporate US chart here, you'll notice that all of the other dashboards adjust to just give me information related to corporate US. And then on this particular screen, it drills down into the quarterly view. So again, dashboards are extremely customizable so that if you want to drill down and see different information, say drill down at the account level or the customer level, you can easily create and customize that as you build out your dashboard. I just want to go through some other dashboard examples. This is a benchmarking dashboard where it shows um, our company's financial information here, the industry average um, information here, and we even have information pulling in from Microsoft and Oracle. Um, the purpose of, the reason why I like to show this dashboard is to show you that you can bring in data sources from anywhere, and once that data source is in the data warehouse, you can build a dashboard that looks something like this. Now, the Microsoft, Finan Microsoft and Oracle financial data that you see here is just information we found on the internet. We put it in an Excel spreadsheet, upload it into a data warehouse, and then we can now build dashboards off of it. All right, so this is an example of a benchmarking dashboard. Okay, and I'm going to show you one more dashboard. This is a CFO dashboard. And again, um, the dashboards are driven by parameters, and um, parameters are also tied to a user security profile. So if I'm a user that only has access to the corporate Asia entity, that's the only thing I'll be able to see and select when I execute this dashboard. However, if I'm a CEO and I run the same dashboard, but I have access to all entities, then as a CEO, I have the ability to select and run for all entities listed here. Right, um, so in this particular dashboard, it, it shows information, financial information, you know, revenue by company, but there's also subledger information, AR and AP information in this dashboard. So the purpose of this dashboard is to show that, you know, whether you have different subledger modules or whether it's data coming from finance module or even, you know, data coming from um, the internet, um, the the power of the data warehouse is that it can store all of that information in a single place. And um, for most end users, they don't care where the data source is coming from. They can view all of the various data sources in a single dashboard like this. All right, um, so again, these are just the various examples of dashboards. Um, e you can build them easily with a simple drag and drop functionality, um, whatever fields that you want to see in a dashboard, you just drag and drop it in. You can easily build these bars, um, charts, graphs. All right, so another component of the web portal is to view reports. Okay, so this is an example of a PNL report. Um, just a note about this report that you see here is it was originally created with our Excel report writer tool. The advantage of building a report in Excel is that it gives the user the flexibility to um, format it however the user wants. You can also design the report. You can control your rows and your columns. Um, and Excel gives you that flexibility so you're not just tied down to a specific template. All right, so once the report gets created in Excel, we push it out to the web portal. 
so that it's available for anyone with a user license to log into the web and view this report. Now with reports, you also have the ability to view it on a mobile app. Um, we support iOS and Android. And you also have the ability to view these reports on a tablet for those that are on the go. Okay, so this is an example of a PNL report. Um, we have revenue and expenses. There's also these charts that you see up on top. So remember that because our software is an Excel add-in tool, we have all of Excel's cap um, functionality at our um, at their disposal to build reports. So these graphs that you see here are actually built within Excel using Excel's graph features. Okay, so just like the dashboard, these reports are driven by parameters. And again, security applies just like how they do with dashboards in that if a user only has access to the corporate Asia entity, that's the only thing he or she will select. Um, but again, with the same report, if a different user um, has different security profile and can access all companies, he or she will be able to run this report for all companies. All right, so I'm going to take us into full screen mode here. Now this report has also has drill down capabilities. If I simply right click on an amount, I have the option to drill down at the summary level or the detail level. Okay, and it shows me the details behind the transaction. All right, so this is available on the web, but for some users, they want to be able to download this as an Excel file. So you can easily do that. You can e even email this report directly from the web portal. You can send as an email. And like I mentioned, you have the ability to download this file. You can save it as an Excel format or a PDF format. So I'm going to actually download this as an Excel format, save it onto my desktop, and it open up that report. All right, so you'll notice that even when I downloaded to Excel, it maintained all of the formatting and the formulas. So once it's downloaded, you can use this workbook as a um, what what if analysis and do some what if analysis scenario. So you'll notice if I start typing into these amounts, all the formulas adjust accordingly. Even with even the graphs up here adjust. So this is a great way to play around with your numbers without worrying about messing up the um, numbers in the actual database. Okay, so. So again, you can save this. You can save it as a PDF file from here. And then you can also email this out to someone that may be outside of your organization. All right, so going back to the web portal, um, we, have, if we have various templates available. We have your typical you know, balance sheet reports, cash flow reports, and you know, many different views of the PNL. Um, we also have subledger reports built, AR, AP, um, and all of these templates are also available for you to download on, on our support website. Now, just a note about these templates, um, because every customer has their own different chart of account structure, obviously they're going to require some tweaking, but it is nice to know that we do have templates available so that you're not building reports from scratch. You can use our template and then um, make tweaks from those templates. All right, and then the last report that I want to show is this website analytics report. And again, this is just to show you the different types of reporting that you can do with our data warehouse. Now, this is information coming from Google Analytics to show how many people visit our website. Um, and so, you know, anything you bring into the data warehouse, you can build dashboards and reports off of. So this is an example of that. These graphs that you see here, is, this is actually an Excel report. So the graphs were also created in Excel. All right. 
So now what I'm going to do is I just showed you a report. I am now going to get into the budget template. So I'm going to first start off with a forecasting example. All right, so just like report, these budget templates were originally created in Excel. Okay, and then again, the benefit of creating budget templates in Excel is that you have the ability to customize exactly how you want the budget template to look. You can customize the level of granularity um, you want to slice and dice the budget data template for. Um, you also can incorporate any formulas, um, any drivers, assumptions, anything that you may already have set up with your current manual Excel process, you can easily bring that over because our BI 360 budget template sits on top of an Excel solution. All right, so this is an example of a forecasting template. Um, so again, a user can go in and select for a specific entity or department, and security will apply here as well. And this is now a combination of entity and department. If I'm a budget manager that only budgets for department 100, that's the only thing I'll be able to see and select. And then with the same template, um, if I'm a different budget manager that has, that has access to a different department, that's the only thing I'll be able to see and select. So this is extremely nice because for those that may be budgeting um, using an Excel, a manual Excel process, you don't have to maintain multiple versions of an Excel spreadsheet, you just use a single budget template and through the use of um, security and these parameters, it can control how the budget input gets inputted into the data warehouse. Now, um, so this is a dynamic form in that if I execute this report for 2015-05 and I hit this refresh button, then what this form will do is it will give me actuals up until May, and then it will allow me to forecast for the remaining periods of the year. I'm just going to switch this back to 2015-09. All right, so what a user can do is um, we've indicated through these templates that any cell colored in yellow is where a end user will go in and do the budget entry. So you can go in and start typing away into the yellow color cells. You could even um, drag the numbers across the month. Very similar to Excel. Or if you want to incorporate any um, formulas, you can easily type in the formulas too. So there's going to be a 20% increase from the previous month. You can type that in. Okay, and then once the user is done with the um, budget entry, he or she would just hit the store data button, and then this information gets stored into the data warehouse. I'm going to show you a couple of other examples that we have. I'm going to show you this budget model expense form. Now this um, looks very similar to the forecasting. Um, but the only difference is you're just budgeting on an annual basis. So here you have the same parameters. Um, you can even budget for multiple budget versions. Um, so if you plan on having, you know, budget 2016 version 1, budget, budget 2016 version 2, and then like a final version, and you want to be able to keep track of all the different changes that occur in the budgeting process, you can create, it's just a naming convention that you have to come up with, and then you can create and budget for as many budget versions and forecast versions as you want. All right, so what I'm going to do is actually let me clear out some of these out so I can budget for them in this demo. All right. So um, this in this with this particular budget form, it pulls in actual data over to the side so that you can use it as a reference. And then again, we have the budget entry cells highlighted in yellow where a user can go in and do the budget entry. I'm going to budget for the conference and seminars account. So just like the forecasting, I can type in the numbers directly or drag my numbers across. 
With this particular form, we also have a spreading window set up. So by simply right-clicking on a particular row in the conferences and seminars account, I'm going to right-click, it pulls up the spreading window. Now with this, I can do an even spread of, say, $100,000. I hit even and hit apply. Then this amount gets evenly distributed across the 12 months. If I want to start my budget numbers off using prior year actuals, then I can start off by doing the history query option, and it'll, give, it'll populate my prior year actuals. And then from there, if I want to do, you know, like a 5 or 10% increase, I just simply hit this, um, type in the amount, hit apply, and then it'll automatically increase the amount by 10%. Another thing that you can do is you can add in line item detail associated with this particular account. So I'm in the conference and seminars account, and we Solver actually has a focus, a user group conference coming up in August for, um, in San Diego for those that are interested. And I can type in the amount here and say some of you guys are going to the GPA conference. Um, and you can have an unlimited amount of line item details. And you can even store comments if you want to store additional information. All right, so all of these comments and line item details also get saved and stored to the data warehouse. So of course, anything you push into the data warehouse, you can spit it back out for a report that has the line item details and comments associated with a particular budget account. And I'm going to show you example of that report um, after I show you this. All right, so once all of these, um, the budget entry process is done, the user, all he or she does is hit the store data button, and everything gets pushed into the data warehouse. All right, so what I'm going to do is actually show you an example of a budget report that um, captures the line item details that you you entered through the um, the budget input form that I just showed you. Okay, so, um, so now this is a budget report, different from the budget input template form that I just showed you. But um, so, like I mentioned, any line item detail or comments you push into the data warehouse, you can spit it back out in a report that looks like this. So here we have all of our operating expense accounts and um, we have these groupings, and if I just click on, you know, I uncollapse these groupings, it shows the line item details that I've inputted through the other template form. All right, so I'm going to show you a couple of other examples. And again, just like with the reports, we have a bunch of budget template reports available for you to download as well. And obviously, every company does their budgeting process differently, um, so you may or may not use a template, um, but they are available for download. All right, so I'm going to show you an example of our payroll form. Now, before I do that, um, all payroll-related, you know, tax-related information is captured through an assumptions form. So let me show you the assumptions form first. So this is where you can go in and type in, you know, all your different FICA, SUDA, SUDA, rate. Um, you can even set a maximum amount for, and then a Medicare percentage. Um, any benefits that you offer, you can list them out here. Um, now, you're not limited to how this assumption form is set up. This is just an example. But just to show you, you know, how creative you can get with assumption form, we even have some travel assumptions related to, you know, like air travel. You can set amounts. Um, so you can get very creative with how you set up your assumption form. Right? Um, so with our pay, in our payroll form, the payroll form is driven by these tax assumptions that a user would go in and put into the yellow cells, save and save the data. Um, we also even have a assumption where it calculates the base per month. So if you have, the, you know, if you want to spread your salary amount by the base per month, you could go in here every year to enter amount of days per month. For, um, and then, of course, once the user is done filling out their assumptions, he or she just hits the store data button, 
And all this information gets pushed into a data warehouse. Okay, so I'm going to open up the payroll form now. So this is an example of a payroll template. And you, know, you can set up um, a user employee, break it up by full-time, part-time. Um, you, know, you can give them a title when their hire month is. So I'm going to make this guy start in February and work up until September. And so you'll notice that based off of these drivers, the salary portion only calculates the salary amount from the month February to September because that's what I've entered in the yellow cell. And so we have, we, we're able to capture a lot of information here and salary increases, bonuses, whether they're eligible for a benefit. Um, all right, and then so what I'm going to do is scroll over to the right to show you the FICA SUDA SUDA calculations. Okay, so this is where we have the FICA rates coming in. This FICA rate that you see here is not a manual um, Excel number that I just typed in. It's, pull, it's an amount pulling from the database um, that was entered through the assumptions form that I just showed you earlier. So it automatically calculates the FICA rate um, in this form. Okay, and then I just want to show you one other thing. So right now, if I scroll over to the right and show you the benefits column, it, it, it doesn't pull in anything. It shows a zero dollar amount for the benefits. But the moment I turn it on and say, hey, this guy is eligible for benefits, then based off of you know the benefit information that was entered on the assumptions form, it will calculate out the benefits amount. Okay, so this guy now has the benefit amount applied. Alright, so this payroll form has two components to it. There's um, information that gets sent to the payroll module, so anything related to employees, whether it's their title, their hire month, salary amount, etc. All of that information gets pushed into the payroll module. But over here down below, it aggregates all the employee information. And then you have the piece that um, writes back to the GL module. So these are the GL accounts related to payroll, and this, these amounts get pushed into the GL module as well. All right, um, so the last thing I want to show or um, is the workflow is um, you can set assignment, um, assign a user a specific form, and then if that person um, opened up the form or submitted it, you have the ability to track that. All right, I apologize, my internet's been a little bit slow. All right, so what you can do is um, you can even set an assignment period with our workflow. Um, so say, for example, you guys budget the first week of September. Um, a user would only be able to input budget in entry during that first week of September. And then, um, and then once that budget time period is closed, the user can no longer do budget entry. All right, so now what I'm going to do is transition into the Excel portion of the presentation to show you how all of these reports and budget templates get created. All right, so what I'm doing is opening up a new Excel workbook. Okay, and here this is where you have the option to connect to either the data warehouse or any of your dynamic ERP products. I'm going to connect to the data warehouse. All right, and while that's floating, you'll notice that um, this looks very much similar to Excel that you're, um, you're familiar with. You have the cells, rows, and columns here. The only difference is this report designer pane over here to the left. Now anyone with a power user license will have access to this report designer pane, and here she will be able to design reports. Now over here to the left, you'll see 
um, modules listed out. So any data source that you bring into the data warehouse it will have its own separate module. And depending on what type of report you want to build, you just simply click on that module, and then you'll have the fields associated with that module available for you to drag and drop into your report. Now, I'm going to demonstrate by quickly building a um, trial balance report. But again, even though I'm building a report, the concept of designing is the same and can be applied to building budget templates as well. Okay, so I'm going to work out of the GL module for this particular example. I'm going to start off by building a header, trial balance. Now this part is 100% Excel. The customers love this, so they don't need to learn a new tool for the formatting piece. All right, so I mentioned before that our software is a drive and drop report designer tool. So any field that you want to bring into your report, you simply look for it. Once you find it, you just drive and drop it in. So I'm going to drive and drop account in. And here, this is where I can control whether the information is going to go down the rows or across the column. So the row. If I want to see my description, I can easily just drag and drop that in. And same thing with my mouse. All right, so I'm just going to execute this report so you can see what it looks like. So here I have my count, account description, and my amount. So looking at this, you'll notice we need to do some formatting. So we see some thousand separators. Um, so I'm going to add that in. And this part is 100% Excel. I'm using Excel to format it as a chunking type. So now when I execute my report, I see my comments. Okay. So one thing to note, in the run mode, you also have the ability to drill down to see information at the summary level or the detail level. You can even create your own custom drill down view. All right, so you'll notice that in the summary drill down, it's pulling in data going all the way back to 2012. And that's because we didn't place any filters on our report yet. So I'm just going to slowly add in fields and dimensions in so we can um, slice and dice this report to the level of granularity that we want. All right, so um, before I do that, I do want to add in a total calculation. This part is 100% Excel. I'm using the equal sum formula to um, get a total line. And equal sum should be a formula most business users are already familiar with. All right, so now if I scroll down to the bottom, we have a total line. OK. So now what I'm going to do is actually transition this trial balance report into a simple PL report. Um, just to show you how account filters work with our software. So I'm going to start off by building the revenue side of a report. So now I need to select my revenue account. So there are several ways. I can hit this uh, magnifying icon and select my revenue account. Now the nice thing about selecting these accounts, if you use this use ranges option, is that if you create a new revenue account in your ERP, um, and that new account happens to fall within the range that's been selected, any report that utilizes this use ranges, um, ranges and the new account falls within this range, it will automatically update. So in terms of report maintenance, it's really nice because when you create a new account in your ERP, you don't have to go into all 10 or 20 of your reports and manually add that in. This use ranges will automatically pick it up. Another way you can select your revenue account is do something like begin with four. Or if you map your accounts into specific categories, you can even filter directly off of that account category field. You can say, give me all my revenue accounts. All right, so I'm just going to keep it simple and do you know accounts begin with four. Uh, and just a note, you can do any combination of dimensions as well. So say in your particular report, Revenue accounts is a combination of accounts um, and also combination of departments. You can um, do any combination of dimensions that you want. All right, so now I have a filter 
of saying, give me just my revenue account to be begin with for. So that is all I see now. I'm going to quickly build out the rest of this panel form and do the expense side by copy and pasting. We highly recommend um, copy and pasting just because it keeps all of the formatting and the formula so you don't have to start from scratch. You just simply tweak the account filters. So for expenses, I'm just going to filter off of this account category field. All right, and then the last but not least, I'm going to do a net income calculation. And this part is 100% Excel because it's just um, revenue total minus expense total. Okay, so let me just run that for you. Hopefully you can see how easy it is to just um, in designing any report or budget template. Um, so you just simply just drag and drop the fields that you want into your template. All right, so if you want to see, you know, your departments going across the column, then what you would do is drag and drop the department and make it a column expansion. Um, if you want to see, you know, your entities going across the column, you can easily do that. I'm going to keep it simple and just drag in the period. Make it a column expansion. I'm going to do some quick formatting so my month gets displayed correctly. All right, and again, formatting is 100% Excel. I'm actually going to do a custom Excel format. Okay, and um, with my period, I want to give the users, um, end user, the ability to select this report for a specific period. So I'm going to make a parameter. Okay, so now I get a prompt, and if I run this report for May, it now only gives me May data. All right, so, so far, we have shown you how you can bring in dimensions going down the rows, and that's what we did with accounts. I showed you how you can bring in dimensions going across the column, and that's what we did with the period. We can even have dimensions going across the sheet, and I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to drag in the entity um, dimension make that into a parameter. And we also have a tree set up for entity, so I'm going to turn that option on. All right, so now if I execute my report, I'm going to get a prompt asking which tree do I want to run. And you can have as many trees as you want for dimension. Okay, so we have a geographic tree based off of entity. If I'm an end user and I just want to run it at the Western Hemisphere level, this report is going to produce three tabs the roll-up Western Hemisphere, which consolidates Canada and U.S., and then the individual entity as its own separate tab. Now, security applies to trees as well. If I'm a an user that only has access to the Western Hemisphere um, roll-up, that's the only thing I can see and select. But if I'm a CEO that has access to the entire tree, I can run it at the consolidated level. And if I do that, it's going to produce one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tabs. All right, so while that runs, I um, just want to talk about the various distribution options. So to tie this back to the web portal, what I showed you in the beginning of the demonstration, if you want this report available on the web, all you would do is just simply hit the upload report button, and then um, you can push it out to the web, and anyone can sign on and see this report. Another option that you have is you have the ability to publish any report. Um, so if I publish this, then what it does is it actually opens up a new Excel workbook. And this is now static Excel. There's no BI-260 functionality tied to it. And you can save it. Um, you can save it as a PDF. And then you can simply email this report off to someone outside of your organization. We also have a tool called the Publisher Tool, and I'll just quickly talk about it. Um, if, uh, the Publisher Tool is really nice because you can combine multiple reports into, say, a report monthly board package. Um, you know, panel, balance sheet, cash flow, et cetera. You can combine them all. You can specify who's going to receive this report um, in what format, whether it's going to be Excel format, PDF format, or even a CSV format. And then you can designate how, uh, where it's going to get sent to. So it can get sent directly to someone's inbox or shared um, network drive or even to SharePoint. 
And then the powerful piece is you can schedule it so that it's automated. So once a month, if the reports go out, um, you can just set that set that up, and then you don't ever have to touch the reports. The reports will automatically get generated. So that's our publisher tool. All right. Um, so just to summarize what we've discussed so far. Okay, so we started the demo off. We started the demo off with um, the web portal, and I showed you the end user's experience in interacting with dashboards, reports, and budget templates. End users have the ability to run reports off of a web browser, mobile app, or tablet for convenient on-the-go access. I showed examples of running dashboards, reports, and various budget templates that are all parameter-driven and controlled by a user security profile. Then I moved into the Excel-based report writer and demonstrated how to build a simple trial balance report using BI360's drag and drop functionality. I then concluded by showing the different ways to distribute a report once the template is complete by either pushing it out to the web portal with a click of a button, publishing the report as an Excel static file, or using the publisher tool to automatically distribute reports on a scheduled basis. I hope that I was able to demonstrate how easy it is to build and execute reports and budget templates using the BI360 tool. All right, so thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to join the webinar. I hope that you found the session to be informative and wouldn't consider BI360 as part of your BI solution. This concludes the webinar. We will now open up the floor for questions. Excellent. Thank you so much. Oh, can you hear me all right? Yes, I can hear you. Excellent. So on the right-hand side panel, there's an area that's called questions. If you could type in questions that you would like to ask. Here's the first one that comes from Jenny. And it is, um, is there a limit on the number of employees that can be entered into the personnel budget? No, nope, there is no limit. Um, typically, when you're bringing employee data over from a payroll source like ADP, it will require a you know, manual one-time load uh, where you have all the employees. But if you're budgeting for new hires and you may not necessarily know how many um, employees you're going to hire, you can have as many unlimited employees in the payroll template. Excellent. All right, Martin asked a question. Can you explain the capital budgeting template that was in the online library. I'm sorry, can we take that question again? Please? Yeah. Can you explain the capital budgeting template that was in the online library? Yeah, so in our um, support website, we have templates, um, you know, CapEx, payroll, various OPEX forms, um, revenue. Um, we even have like different allocation forms. Um, and again, just because every company does their budgeting different, um, unfortunately we can't capture all, all template needs, but we do have a bunch available on our support website um, for download. Okay, here's another one. Can you cite a few key advantages or differences um, to regular personnel reporting via BI 360 versus management reporter. All right, so some of the key differences is with uh, management reporter, um, you're just limited to, uh, if you're, you know, connected directly to an ERP, you're limited to just the financial data. However, with BI 360, if you're connected um, directly to the ERP, you have access to all subledger modules, um, so stock, POP, et cetera, and that's already available um, once you purchase the software. And then you also have the ability to report from the data warehouse, and then with the data warehouse, if you have multiple data sources, whether it's payroll information or CRM, you can even build reports off of all the various data sources. And then in terms of designing reports, it's drag and drop, as you saw um, during the demonstration. And it is drag and drop in Excel. 
also, you know, capturing formulas and formatting is extremely easy to do with our software. Okay, excellent, excellent. All right, um, and then, so there are templates that come with BI 360 is really what you're saying. Mm -hmm. We have templates available. Um, we have report templates for all the different ERC systems, um, GP, NAV, SL, um, and then we also have reports available for the data warehouse connection, and we have budget templates available for download. Okay. All right. When budgeting, the possible distributes the budget templates to multiple individuals to populate and then have that information upload directly into a master budget. Um, yes, you. So with the budget templates, they are available for anyone with a um, user license to log in. And the nice thing is that you don't have to have you know, multiple Excel versions for every individual user that made budget, you just maintain one template and from there you can control, you can even control the security of the user so that um, the budget manager will only budget for his or her respective department, et cetera. Um, so our BRD to see solution can streamline that whole process and then once they're done, he or she just hits that um, save button and all the budget data gets pushed into the data warehouse. Okay. Last question in the queue. It says, capital budgeting template. How does that work? Um, I'm sorry, what was, what was the budget template? It's going back to the capital budgeting template. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. So, um, so I know I went through that very briefly, but um, you can, we do have a template available for that. And so the template is set up where you specify, you know, the capital, you know, whether it's a building or a computer, et cetera, you can specify when it was purchased. And from there, um, from the purchase date, it will automatically do your depreciation, um, whether it's straight line, et cetera. Um, and it will capture the depreciation. And so similar to the payroll, the CapEx form will um, save the capital-related information to the capital module, but then it will sum everything up and then store to the GL account for it to capture the depreciation on the capital account. Okay, good detailed question. So I think the, the key thing here is um, you can get in touch with Tracy um, here at this number. So oh, he great job on presenting, but Tracy is a contact that can answer specific questions. And of course, uh, BMI is also trained and ready to go on getting you up and running with the solver solution. So, um, do get in touch with your regular contact here at um, Interdyne BMI.